Hello everyone, it's Mr. Wolf here. I don't have my packet with me, but you should have your packet and we're gonna be writing this on the front of our packet. And uh, I just want you to write along with me and we're gonna title this The Greenhouse Effect. All right, so why do we call this, why, why do we call like how CO2 works in the atmosphere, why do we call it the greenhouse effect? Well, I'm gonna draw just a little greenhouse right here. I want you guys to do the same, all right? And how a greenhouse works is sunlight comes in, all right? And it travels through the glass because it's transparent, all right? But what it ends up happening is it gets re-emitted as a different type of light, infrared light. All right, now infrared light can't pass through the greenhouse as much, so it bounces right back, all right? And you can imagine that this light staying in the greenhouse is gonna cause it to warm. And that's how you're able to grow plants in greenhouses even when it's you know snowing outside, all right? So let's talk about how the greenhouse affects in natural earth conditions. So I'm just gonna label this over here, natural earth conditions. And that's gonna be these three, one, two, three pictures right here. So let's just first start off with drawing our Earth's surface, all right? And I'm gonna draw the sun here. And I'm gonna draw five light rays coming down. One, two, three, four, five, okay? And what's gonna happen is just like in a greenhouse, some of that light is gonna get re-emitted as infrared light. So I'm gonna draw five light rays being re-emitted back into space, all right? And I might even write a caption, all right? Sunlight is absorbed and re-emitted as infrared light, all right? So infrared light is light just like visible light. The thing is we just can't see it, all right? But we could think of this as heat, all right? So it's there, we just can't see it, all right? So what's gonna happen next is we're gonna draw in this box some CO2 molecules. So now we're gonna be drawing what's happening up here in the atmosphere. So it's almost like we're zooming in right here, all right? So I'm gonna draw a CO2 molecule here, a uh, CO2 molecule here, and a CO2 molecule here, okay? Now, CO2, all right, absorbs and re-emits right, infrared light back to Earth. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's draw a picture. So remember, we have this infrared light that's being re-emitted from Earth, all right? And we can imagine that infrared light, some of it is just gonna travel past CO2 molecules and out into space, all right? Now, some of that infrared light, if it hits a CO2 molecule, it gets absorbed and it bounces back, all right? Notice the similarities between this greenhouse, especially the roof right here, and our CO2 molecules, all right? Some of that light, again, is gonna be able to get through, all right? But some of it, again, is gonna bounce into CO2 molecule, get absorbed, and bounce right back. And maybe I'll have another sun ray just be able to come through right here. So not all the C not all the light gets trapped by CO2, but some of it does, all right? And this is really, really important because the re-emitted light all right, further warms the planet. Right? or the earth. So these natural earth conditions, all right, this is actually a good thing, all right? Without, so this is gonna be without CO2. I'm gonna draw a little thermometer here. If there was no CO2 at all, all right, the average temperature on earth would be about negative 18 degrees Celsius, all right? It's pretty dang cold, all right? With CO2 in natural conditions, all right, because we're reflecting some of that light back, we're gonna have higher temperatures. 
we have an average of about, I think it's 14 degrees Celsius. All right, overall on the earth. Obviously there's different temperatures, different places, but overall 14 degrees. So a huge jump in temperature just by having CO2. And remember CO2 just makes up less than 1% of all the atoms that are molecules and that make up air, but really, really powerful at absorbing and re-emitting light back. So that's the greenhouse effect in normal conditions. All right, but now let's look at human impacts over here. All right, so what are some examples of human impacts? Um, well, let's say anything, any, let's say, let's draw a power plant right here, all right, where we're burning fossil fuels, all right, and we're burning those fossil fuels and those are going into the atmosphere, that's gonna put more CO2 into the atmosphere. All right, we burn that those fossil fuels so we could get electricity, right? So that electricity could go to our homes. Those are supposed to be some wires, all right? But I also wanna leave room to draw a car right here, all right? Because when you burn gasoline, the exhaust from your car, all right, is also, part of that is also CO2 as well. So humans are putting a lot more CO2 into the environment that was previously, all right, just underground. All right, so here are the fossil fuels were originally underground. All right, we're sucking those up, burning that fuel, and then out comes CO2 into the atmosphere. All right, so what happens as a result? All right, well, the same thing is gonna happen here. Nothing happened, nothing changes with the sun. We're still gonna get our five light rays coming down. And our five infrared rays coming out. Remember, like this visible light gets absorbed by the earth and it gets re-emitted as an infrared light. Right. Infrared light, by the way, is the same type of light that cooks your, uh, it gets emitted from a toaster. Some of that you see is actually red, but some of the light that comes off that actually cooks your, your toast is infrared light. All right. But now notice though that because of human impacts, we have more CO2 in the atmosphere. So I'm no longer just going to draw two or sorry, three CO2 molecules here. I'm gonna draw a lot more. All right, now before humans, all right, there was about 200 parts per million of CO2 in the atmosphere, all right? So we could say, or not before humans, but let's say before 1850, or before the Industrial Revolution, all right? Today, all right, we're at about 414 parts per million of CO2. That's a lot, all right? So we're gonna have that infrared light coming back, coming up, just like we did here, but notice that we have more CO2 molecules, so this is gonna get absorbed by CO2, get hit back. This one is gonna hit CO2, get absorbed, come back. This one hit CO2, come back. All right, maybe one makes it through, all right? But most of these are gonna hit CO2 and come right back. So what you notice is that a lot more light is staying in the atmosphere, all right? And as a result, all right, more reflected light means an increase in global temperature. All right. I'm just going to draw our thermometer and I'm just going to show it being at a much, much higher level. All right. So hopefully this does a good job at describing what the greenhouse effect is, all right, how it relates to an actual greenhouse, how it works in natural conditions and how that's actually really, really good for keeping a warm environment. But the problem is, is by putting more CO2, by essentially doubling the amount of CO2 in just the past 150, 200 years, how that's gonna cause the planet to warm. Thanks for watching.